Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast, The Engineer Whisperer. I'm super excited to be here because I have a super fun guest today. So let me welcome him in. Avi, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Very happy to be here. I know. I can't wait to ask you all kinds of questions. So before we start, tell us a little bit about you. So let's see. I'll give you the give you the medium version. I, as my wife likes to say, I am a recovering English major who stumbled into tech. Uh, I thought I was going to be a literature professor uh, and when I was in college and fell into websites in the late 90s at a small firm in New York, made my way into like email and CRM, did some early video stuff, worked at Yahoo and Akamai and and really began to learn more about the internet in the in the mid like tw uh, 2010s and then i jumped into advertising technology at a company called media math uh, which was a demand side platform and currently i work for amazon advertising in a group called amazon marketing cloud so it's a, i'm not i've actually spent a lot of my career running technical sales and pre-sales engineering teams, product marketing teams. And so I've, the first time I've actually found myself in a product group, which has been a really interesting evolution for me. And my current team within this marketing cloud division oversees what we call like customer enablement. Uh, so building education, how to use the product uh, for our customers and technical writing. And then I also oversee our support engineering functions. So it's been a really interesting first two and a half years at Amazon and excited to talk about that and sort of this uh, circuitous line that got me from uh, reading a lot of novels and Shakespeare in the 90s to where I am today. Wow, I know. like. <laughs> I have so many questions, but let's focus today on transition into a director role and how you became a leader of leaders. Mm -hmm. So where I would like to start is with the easy stuff. So what came easy for you? Yeah, so so the well, what came what came easy? Uh, I would say I am naturally an extrovert, so. If anything came easy, it was maybe the people side. Connecting to people personally is something that actually fuels me. I get energy from that. And so building teams and, uh, and even doing a lot of personal recruiting of uh, you know, new team members when I was building teams, especially in like my early media math days, uh, I wouldn't, again, it's not easy, but it, it came more naturally. And as I transitioned and, you know, the teams grew and we had to create layers, uh, given, given the expansion, especially like the, the global nature of the teams, you, you, you do have to shift from thinking that you need to do everything to finding the right both mechanisms and uh, in some ways letting go of your ego and putting a lot of trust in these people that you've either hired or inherited as part of your team to delegate to them and empower them and it, you don't, you don't always, it, it, it's not something, certainly not a switch that happens uh, like a light switch, right? It's, it's a process. It's an evolution. And you almost don't realize how capable sometimes your team members are until you, you really unleash and, and, and let them thrive. But this, this was one of the bigger changes that, uh, that in some ways has to happen within you. And then you bring that, the, the sort of sense of empowerment to your team so that, so that they can thrive. And, and I will say, should I, I, I began my career as like an individual 
sales engineer, you know, web producer. So I did the individual work. And so as you grow into a leader and then a leader of leaders, you can make, you can draw that through line to the tactical work. And in some ways you also have to adjust to missing doing that work. I loved working directly with customers and partners and, and a bunch of different groups to help them realize, uh, over, overcome challenges, re, you know, realize different business goals, use and integrate certain technology, whatever, whatever the situation was. Uh, and that still actually fires me up. But I also discovered that empowering my teams so they can get fired up and do what I used to do became the next kind of beautiful chapter uh, of how I evolved. And I will just say, I also, I've had the great fortune to multiple times uh, build up different groups in different situations and in different companies of different sizes. So, uh, you know, a company of, of uh, probably 75 to 100, and then uh, as MediaMath grew in the six to 800, and obviously now at Amazon, in a, I'm, I'm in a group of several hundred, but, you know, within a business that's many, many thousands uh, within the ads business. So the, the scale of it and the scope changes and your mindset needs to change as well. Uh, having come into Amazon as an individual contributor and then growing into a leader, becoming a leader in Amazon, in, in some ways, uh, a lot of the skills, the human, the human aspects are the same, but the way in which you have to operate within the business and empower your teams does change. And being able to calibrate that and sense that as part of like the DNA of the organization, it does make a difference. You have to be attuned to that. Uh, and it, it takes new energy and, and new understanding, I think, in depending on the organization that you're in. I, mean, I wonder when was that point or what was the trigger when you you shifted and made that pivot of, okay, I'm going to empower my team now. I'm going to trust them. I'm going to delegate more. I'm going to let go of, of slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Let, letting go like that deliberate decision. Do you remember? Curious. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say I, I remember the date, but I think you, you reach these natural points where you just realize that you can't be as deeply involved anymore. Um, I, and again, I've had the good fortune of hiring teams and then inheriting others. And when you're growing a team from scratch, you it often happens uh, slower. And so you tip and so like one of the first times, right, you start, and you're you're in a position where you're in you're probably initially in a hybrid uh, role where you're 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 doing some IC work. You're involved with some customer work. Let's say if you're at a at a software vendor, and you're doing uh, you're managing like a smaller team. But then it kind of naturally you reach this place where you're like wow, uh, I I I it's it's just not it's not scalable anymore. Particularly if you're dealing with um, a, a, glo a global function and you need to support customers in different regions in i i think there there isn't like a you know a, a bell that goes off but you a, as you reflect over the the days and weeks um and perhaps as you do you know different business reviews and check-ins uh with the broader business uh i you 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 realize that the scale of it as well as like the let's say the ambition of the business to continue to grow uh, to almost demands that you empower versus do the, do the technical work and, and sort of finding that balance in the right ways is important to how you're, you're able to scale your own personal best uh, you know, within the organization and, and, and with your team. Oh, I like that. Your personal best. It's almost like just, just focus on evolving, keep growing, and then you will know when it's it's too much and when you got to that point of, okay, uh, there's just not enough hours in the day for me to get everything done. And that's, that's right. good. That's good because then what you're talking about, then that reflection point comes of, okay, I think that's the sign of, of me pivoting now. 
enabling my team, trusting them more. And, and then I also got to that point where I grew to be in this position to now pivot. So I love that. I love, I love this evolution of a leader that you're sharing with us. Sure. And one, one other quick thing I think is important to know, right? The more times you do it, so, right, my, you could say my managerial muscle oh. has been toned over the last, you know, 15, 18 years. So the first time I managed people, and even the second time as, as I'm building a team, you, you don't really know yet how yeah. it's going to go. But obviously, as with anything else, uh, you put in your hours and your understanding and you, you, you understand the patterns. You, you begin to read people better. You understand yourself better and you understand your team. And so you can calibrate, you can inform, your decisions often come faster, not to say you don't make mistakes. Uh, certainly you do, especially from a hiring perspective, which is you're, you're always calibrating. But I will say... Andrea, that you reach, especially as I've come into Amazon, in many ways, it was much more natural for me uh, as I'm later in my career to know this, this you know, invisible point yes. at which uh, you want to empower uh, versus, you know, 10, 10, 12 years ago when I was uh, in some ways still trying to figure it out and, uh, and I didn't have those, those same muscles formed yet. I wonder if it's now just, uh, just this thought came to me. So let me just check in. Is it you said invisible point? Is it an is it a a feeling? Is it the I have a you know as they say gut feeling? I have a feeling about this. Did that also show up for you? I think oh I think I think for sure. And I and I, I admittedly I operate in many ways. I live uh, from from my gut uh, a lot. Uh, and I, I try to uh, stay in tune with it, not to say that I don't make decisions from data and particularly at Amazon, you're, there's, there's, a, there's a big focus on making data-driven dri data decisions. But I also uh, want to think about also, does, does, it, does it feel right? You know, do in some sense, do I feel aligned to this situation, to this decision, to, to the energy of the team? And and oftentimes the the feeling is and and particularly like in these in these situations of trust and empowerment, uh, it's it's with an individual person, right? It's not some yes. uh, you know nebulous uh, sense. You you are making in you're making decisions with your your people and your leaders. And a lot of you're, you're there's there, there then and as you build up these relationships, there's there like this layer of implied trust, and and yet it's not the same with everyone, right? Like that, there's no human that's the same, yes. and so with your with your different leaders and and your ICs, in some ways, it's it's constantly evolving, calibrating, right? And as we know, one day to the next, it's not like our mood and our our capability, our ability to show up is like exactly the same level every single day and those are also the things as a leader that you that you have to again stay attuned to and you're you're constantly adapting uh and uh and that's again those but and again i feel like those those patterns you're like your 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 brain and your being become more attuned to uh, to those uh as you get into your advanced age as uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far yet, but uh, cer certainly further in my career than what I than when I was much younger. Well, I love the message that you're sending because, people, you know, as someone who's an IC and is thinking of you know down the road when I'm going to be a director or, or so forth, then there's a lot of fear of well, how I'm going to know this and how I'm going to know that, and I need a clear, I don't know, clear career path with all the steps written out. Uh, but really what, how life works and leadership works is that you you try it out, you try leadership out. And then you said many times you try, you calibrate, you get new data, you build new habits, you are getting to be aware of signs and you put it all together and then you make a different decision, then you're going to get some data back. 
Some call it failures, some call it learning opportunities, and then you calibrate again. Hopefully you have grown. So it's this constant movement. You're moving, they're moving, they're growing, the business is growing, your mindset is growing. So it's, it's uh, you know, I love the message that you're saying. You can still be in peace and with peace of where you are and build on your on your skills right now. And then that consistent work will take you to that pivoting point and you will feel it, you will know it. Once you're there, you will recognize it. Uh, or you're going to make a mistake and then you're going to recognize it. So it's, right. it's this amazing mindset that you're sharing. Now, let me ask you what was challenging for you in that transition or in a transition. Well, it's interesting. I would say that as I as I said earlier, the the people part, the the interactions and and sort of coming to this sense of trust uh, was on some level natural, but it doesn't mean it was easy. It was all it was all challenge uh, in some way. Uh, all learning opportunity, uh, and and in particular the these moments that I'm talking about, this understanding, particularly in the beginning of my managerial career, or let's say that those phases, it, I honestly everything was challenging because it was so new. But which is the case whenever you're learning anything new. But I remember really early on, I you you could almost feel the tension where. I had I had developed good relationships with these folks that I had hired in, but there was a tug of war where I kept trying to assert what I thought was the best way to do something or approach a certain situation. And it in many in many cases, it was probably the wrong way to approach it, where instead of taking half a step or a full step into the situation, I may have been better served taking half a step back. And on reflection, as I look back, what however many years, I can actually remember many situations where the, the team member may not have told me, uh, but I, I can reflect and say, you know what, I was too involved and I may have stunted the, some of the growth and the flourishing of those team members, even if they enjoyed our relationship, they, they may have been able to thrive more or sooner or what, whatever, if I had allowed it to happen. And I think, and then later, and so, so you could say chat that the challenges that I encountered were were they they have changed during obviously during the say the last 15 years I've been managing in those first five or six or seven the challenges were very focused there was finding that right that right calibration or balance point so that I could okay. know when to take half a step back and create the space um and and then as as uh, as I've progressed you 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 like you learn that lesson, and then some new ones emerge as you as you go on. And I would say one of the bigger lessons I've learned, or and one of the challenges, was uh, working with a lot of international uh, teams. Now, and the last number of years, I realized in some ways I was fairly culturally insensitive, or in certain areas. And I wasn't as attuned to certain cultural customs and uh, ways of communicating and, you know, picking up on cues, particularly now that a lot of what we do is, um, is, is on a, a Zoom or, or, you know, video channel, right? Very, very different. And so you have to be almost super tapped in to, you know, feeling the, uh, the emotion and kind of reading cues and signals in ways that we, we uh, perhaps didn't do as much before. And that has been both a challenge and a real opportunity for any, any leaders, really anyone who is communicating um, frequently, but also specifically like team leaders to be able to uh, work through that. And I would say that that has definitely been a huge challenge, uh, over, especially over the last couple of years. Give us one example of how you overcame that challenge or what have you done? What new thing you 
incorporated in your leadership and shifted well, your mindset? Well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's um, uh, one, one way. Well, what? so one, one layer of that is to retain uh, a strong sense of patience, both with myself and with uh, and with team members. Um, and I, I have a, I have a tendency to, uh, let's say rush to judgment, um, or, uh, respond, you know, too quickly. And I've had to check myself, uh, and, and, and bring a heavy dose of self-awareness to recognize when I'm doing that. I will also say I have been so grateful and fortunate to have other team members who, uh, I feel safe enough to give me feedback around when I am, uh, when I, I don't know, cross a line or not even, not even in a, in an offensive way, but when I can show up better, let's say. Did, did um, you give and, them permission? Yeah. Did you give them permission as a leader that they're, you know, that they're doing it's, it? It's such a great question. Not explicitly, Andrea, but okay. uh, it was, I guess that that's, uh, in many ways, the beauty of the cultures that I try to create and, and foster across the team mm -hmm. where they feel psychologically safe such that they implicitly feel open enough to share feedback with me. And even just very recently, a couple months ago, one of my team members recommended a book uh, uh, that she's like, I think you should, I think you should read this book and you will be able to better understand some of our, uh, our, our international team members. Uh, and this is going, not that you do a bad job today, but you could be even better and, mm -hmm. and sort of recognize some of these cultural differences. And it would, it would, it would, it would just open up the, the culture, uh, in ways that we, we, we just, just to thrive more and you know, who, who wouldn't want that? Well, that says a lot about your response to a feedback. So I was asking about permission then, because um, with per when we when I give permission to someone, I already go through. Okay, what are the fears? What are the, you know, the challenges that I have with this before I give permission? But by the time I give permission, I already work through those. So. So that when they give me the feedback, then I will be like, okay, yeah, I did say you can give me permission. Um, so that's why I was curious with you. So you're, uh, you know, it's it's implicit, and then it's your skill level of responding and receiving feedback, and it's that question of well, what do I do with this feedback? That's right. How do I apply it? How do I look at it? And what? how does it serve me it's still your decision um, and i do think feedback that you can elicit either implicitly or even explicitly from your team members that they that they share with you in oftentimes even more so than your superiors as it were your managers can can just be the most valuable because it means that you've you've developed a trust that the the relationship can uh, can will will grow because of it and and for me that it, that's just that's sort of where where the magic is happening mm. so cool so cool yes as i'm thinking based on my experience that when i gave feedback to to my manager managers um and just listen, thinking about their responses, yes, one particular, she she thanked me and and yeah, shifted into becoming a highly capable leader because of one courageous you know sentence that I said. So yes, yes, we we can work together. But I love your perspective from a leadership perspective that that means to you that you have built trust with them where they can give you the feedback and well i love what you just said too and i'll pull on that thread which is you because you as the leader you know that the courage it takes regardless of the comfortability or how many years you've been working with the person it still takes a lot of courage to share that feedback with your manager and so or any right anyone senior regardless yeah. And 
recognizing that like almost reinforces the fact that, you know, this is something that is significant and that, you know, it, it, it's almost our duty as leaders, managers to honor that and to, to take it in and, and employ it in whatever ways we can. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I haven't thought about it that way. That one of the ways great leaders are, are made is to recognize people's courage. Oh, I, that's, that's super cool. Well, let's get back to you. What was something, if anything, that surprised you in your transition? I think the uh, as I as I kind of grew in in some of my seniority, I honestly I feel like one of the things that surprised me was uh, how natural the the people part felt, and then how somewhat resistant I was to creating a lot of structure and process. And so this, I'll actually tie this also to, to a challenge. And as you scale and as your team grows, you, you don't just need to be a great people person. You actually need to give foundational structure and processes so that you can, you can grow and help your, your team grow. I actually, I use this with my team today, which is three P's. Whenever you're entering an organization, growing, whatever, people, product, process. And so you come into any role and you need to establish a sense of who are all the people that are, that are informing what you're doing up, down, and sideways. What's the product? What's the functionality? What's the, what are the technical underpinnings? And how do I continue to grow my knowledge? And what are the right processes or mechanisms that will make me as an individual be successful, but also our team. And I'm constantly also seeking this feedback from our teams who are, like individually, and I'll, I'll ask them in our weekly one-on-ones, are there things about our current processes that can be improved upon that you're seeing? Are there, are there leaky areas uh, that need to be patched? Are there things we haven't yet considered? And, and sort of constantly thinking through that, not in like an aggressive way, but just having this mind of like, okay, as we, as we look around the corner and we're constantly trying to expand as individuals and as a group yeah. uh, through that energy, how do, how, do we, how do we contemplate that? And so back to your question, like process was not something that came naturally to me. And therefore it was a challenge and it almost surprised me that I needed to create the process. Um, but then again, another one of those things, once you realize, oh, wow, you actually need to create process in certain ways. Um, and so how do you find the right, how do you find the right structure? And how do you create uh, at least like a reservation of process that allows for enough autonomy within it, oh, but yeah. it, right, it affords growth through that. So you, you can't be too restrictive with with certain steps, but you do need you know SOP standard operating procedures, yeah, some other constraints. mechanisms. Yes, to be able, of course. Otherwise, it's you know it's uh, it's so anarchy. How, so yeah. how did you do it when you say, oh okay, after you realize that okay, I do need to get better at this, and we need some processes. Uh, did you get help? What kind of help? Or what you, how how did yeah, you so work in that? I so so first off, I. I always believe in a uh, couple of things. Number one, everyone's a leader, right? Even if you're not a manager of people, you are a peer leader. And peer leadership uh, through that philosophy helps or and it should empower anyone in any organization to embody the notion of, yes, I am a leader and I can uh, establish impact. I just need to take action to uh to uh to to sort of making making that flourish and be felt throughout the organization so and 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 beyond and you also want to look at one of the three p's people right don't just look in your in your immediate circle you have to look outside look outside of your organization your industry and everything to really learn from anyone and so i've been very fortunate to work with 
uh, folks who were within my organization outside. I've heard people on podcasts and I've reached out to them to kind of seek their insights in just a one-on-one -on -one scenario. And I've had longstanding, you know, more mentor-like relationships um, to learn from them. And one, one, one of my favorites, he always talks about, um, as in, especially in this, in the context of this conversation, what is the system that you're, or the set of systems that you're creating so that, so that you can scale, so that you can scale yourself and that you can, uh, you know, once you, let's say you, you depart and you go to your next role, whatever, whatever that might be, oh, yeah. you can have a system in place so that your, uh, your successor can come in and take that system and continue to, to run with the team and make sure that it's operating effectively, figure out ways to improve mm. it, uh, and tinker with it. Um, and as I said, you 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 want to learn from any anyone who's really around you and that you can pull from. So you know, up, down, and sideways. I love the process of co-creation. So I'll bring together uh, the team and solicit their so, solicit their guidance. They're often the ones who are more directly impacting with what's happening uh, with with customers, with the product, etc. And so getting their feedback uh, often highlights things that I may not even have known. And it helps us figure out what, again, what's the right set of processes for that reservation? How do we need to be optimizing it? Uh, and, and, you know, again, finding, finding that right balance with, between like structure and autonomy so that it's not too restrictive and gives room, uh, you know, to breathe and thrive. Oh, I love it. So you go on this on this search, on this discovery of, of what will work and you have some guidelines of what you're looking for. And then you have this open mind of, uh, I can learn from anyone. So I am courageous enough and brave to reach out to whoever inspires me and who might help me. And then you kind of like piece it together. And, uh, and then what you said before, then you keep calibrating. Is this still working? You ask the team, you add new things. Mm, okay. Well, I love that creative process, if I can say it that way, that, yeah. <laughs> that you're doing for your own process building and habit building. Mm, wow. Well, as we're getting close to the end, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the time. Um, let me ask you this question. Is there a transition that you're going through right now? And would you like to share about it? Interesting. I, well, it's right on some level, we're always transitioning, transitioning through, through something professionally in life, whatever it is. Um, and I would say my like my current transition is more on the personal side actually where my wife and i just uh sold our house in the suburbs where we were for uh 16 17 years our daughter's in college and we moved into boston and it's been a wildly exciting change uh, but a transition because we had been, you know, living in a certain way with a certain set of patterns and cadence and energy for uh, for quite a while, and we made this uh, made this leap, let's say, and it's been it's been so exciting, a lot of adjustment, and I can now walk to work for the first time in many many years. That's been very exciting, uh, but it requires like it's a recalibration. Uh, and, um, and, and it's, again, it's, it's been very important. And in some ways we're, you know, we're very ready for this change. Uh, but it, it, it sort of forces you into some, you know, new modes of thinking and operating, uh, in some ways it's been, it's been a great catalyst to, uh, to get me going in, in, in different ways, listen, listening to different audio books on my walk or what, whatever it is. Um, and then, at, and then at work, it's, uh, I would say that the transition now uh, versus when I first started at Amazon, I would say the transition into Amazon was very intense, as you might expect. Um, also, the transition out of Media Math, where I, had, where I had been working for eight years, another sort of mindset shift and, 
um, important moment to like reconsider uh, what would how like what what was the the self that I envisioned uh, as I and, and and sort of what were the professional identities that I was embodying? Oh, uh, yeah. And when I sh when I shifted into Amazon, as I mentioned before, I had to let go of this identity of myself as I was a manager, and this is how. Uh, or I was a leader of people and this uh, team builder, right? This was so fundamental and core to how I thought of myself professionally. And then I went into Amazon. I was like, well, wait, now I'm an individual contributor. Does that mean I'm uh, like, how, how do I, how do I think through that? Yes. And it turns out it was unbelievably liberating. I learned a lot about what I was capable of in ways that I wouldn't have discovered had that shift not happened. And, uh, and I, I, I think I've been able to just uh, move more in more of a flow um, as I let go of, of, of some of these like false identities that were, that I was, or, or stories that I was telling to myself about, who I was, but rather I was able to discover all of these new things about what I loved, um, having having gone through these these fairly uncertain uh, these uncertain situations. And in many ways, right? That's that's a that's a transition, uh, and that that transition just opened up you know this new portal of possibility. Wow! So step into a transition, even if it looks like it's going to be scary go in with fear because you will discover some new things about you that you didn't even think about and you're going to find some new opportunities wow oh yeah, I mean, and, you, and you're still learning and continuing to to reflect on on new stuff always well this is why I invited you here. I wanted you to share <laughs> because others, in my experience, others are going through something similar. So as you said, through our stories and sharing what we have gone through, um, others will discover their resilience and that change is um, not so scary. Um, yes, thank you. Well, for it can be, I think it can be scary, but we have to push through it. And yeah. right and I even said this to one of my team members earlier today, where she's going through this exercise and uh, trying to put down these new ideas, and she's nervous. And I said, "Oh, but that you have to, you want to harness that nervousness. That is, it's actually, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you shy away from it. And I've been in the same place so many times where you feel this pang." Uh, like when I used to speak the, for, for early times when I would speak in public and I get this big pang and I, I'd try and shy away from it. But if you can push through it with a sense of courage and grace, you will always discover on the other side something new about yourself and um, that you're that you're capable of so much more than you realize. Oh yes, and that feeling is just super cool, right? The, oh, the best. That that's what gives that fulfillment of oh wow, I'm so capable of doing this. Where that's right. I don't know an hour ago I thought that I was not able to. Um. So yes, we we can grow. We can grow, and it's based on the decisions that we make, the choices that we make. And I say choose differently, and then you're gonna discover something different. Well, I mean, we are at the end of the podcast and I want to give you the mic back, close us out. What would you like to leave us with today? I think just to, uh, to double click on what we were just saying is to invest in your personal courage and find whatever goals or dreams if you will that you want to pursue and don't let a any kind of lack of courage or confidence hold you back or certainly or fear uh push through it and like just just go after that thing be whatever it is or the set of things have that conversation ask that question um explore deepen your curiosity 
and and really bring as much courage as you can because uh, once you accomplish whatever that next thing is, you this this is this is like the the maybe the center of being human is is how we is how we live and why wouldn't you want to live with the most amount of uh, of courage and growth uh, so that you can you can continue to expand. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Why wouldn't you want to live with the most amount of courage and curiosity? I yeah. Um, and on that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you here today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right.